Hello and welcome to Mostly Minnesota Music Podcast Edition. I'm Ann Tracy. I'm here with my co-host. Heather Baker. Yes. And we are excited to have Jordan Carr joining us today. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I've been enjoying listening to your music. Um, I super enjoyed the video. The awesome. Yeah, but we'll talk about that first. Can I just ask you to introduce yourself a little bit and tell us about Jordan Carr and the boys and sure uh, my name is Jordan Carr <laughs> and uh, the Jordan Carr Jordan Carr and the boys and I've been doing this solo project for goodness the last since about 2011 2012 with a few hiatuses here and there I put out um, three separate records and hoping to release this third one, Rail Vodka, that we're going to talk about within the next few months. But you know, the world is kind of strange now, so we will we'll see we'll see how that works out. But yeah, that uh, I've been doing this for a long time. We just put out a new music video that we did a Kickstarter for, that was um, uh, heavily funded, much more than we had asked for, which was phenomenal. And there was nice. kind of a train wreck of a process getting it done with the, with the new world, but it is finished and it's out there. And I believe that's what we're speaking about. Yeah. And that is the rail vodka video. Yep. 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 Yeah. 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 I was, I'm afraid I was just talking about it to I, somebody I walk with every day, sure. just the other day, because it was, um, well, it's, she was talking about how none of us have been through a big cultural thing like a, most of us who are you know maybe my parents but like a war or something but all of a sudden now everything is everything in society is so everybody's going through the pandemic right. together right certainly most people in minnesota in one way or another are affected by the civil unrest yes you know there's the recent election all of this and I, she was saying you know you know we just didn't have to worry about any of that when i was a kid you know right we, younger and I said I have the best video what I love so much about your video is it's really kind of a call back to the 80s yeah yeah that was you know uh, it is but it's and I well I know because of the the notes that you have in it that it was kind of a memorial to a friend of yours a fan of yours uh, a great friend of ours who yeah. had, uh, we had toured with his name is Tyler Catava and we had uh, our bands had toured together and we kind of grew up in the same town playing a lot of the same shows and we enjoyed a lot of the same things that were um, cheap alcohol and <laughs> and a 80s hair metal ballads is what we really bonded over. And we would get we would go out and party pretty hard on nights playing in smaller towns and then go right to the dive bar in the morning. And he would always push me to like he'd say, just if you just have a couple shots of this Karkov vodka, you'll feel fine. And I'm dying going, ah fine and then that just became habit after a while because i was like this does make me feel good <laughs> and that was we had a lot of fun doing that and we would pump he would pump like he would use his student loans and just pay for everything and i was kind of a bum so but he was we were pumping his student loan money into his uh into the jukebox in small towns at 10 in the morning getting wasted <laughs> and these people are going they're there for brunch going what I, we're get, we're not getting the best looks obviously but then we bonded over that and it was so fun to me that and we, I, we were never hurting anyone or i'm sure we were being a little obnoxious but it was so much fun and he had year a couple of years later he had gotten oral cancer and that ate him up quick within a year he had passed away so it went and it took me maybe a year or two to write something but i was we came, I came up with this song and I really wanted to do something that was that if he was here, he'd be laughing the whole time. So we got a lot of explosives together and a lot of cheap alcohol, which is probably not the best combination. <laughs> it's fun to watch. <laughs> it, was, it was fun to do. It was a lot. A lot of us afterwards were maybe a couple of days later when we were all talking, texting, saying, I can't believe no one ever mentioned we didn't have a fire extinguisher there. There was no hose, no water. And it, it was, 
I mean, I'm, it was not the safest shoot, but it was, it was about as, it was about his uh, 80s, 80, 80s ballad esque as we could get. It's, I mean, you guys just standing on the top of a bus. Are you, or it's, I mean, it yeah. just is, <laughs> it's it classic. I just had to laugh at it. I mean, right, you know, I just enjoy it. And what I, what I, what I enjoy kind of the twist on it, and I thought, I bet that is everything that, that your friend Tyler said, man, yep. someday we're going to have fireworks. Someday okay. we're going to, I just pictured you doing everything he would have loved. Yeah, for sure. And there was, there was supposed to be some, some very, uh, you remember maybe Top Gun is maybe the movie I'm thinking of the most where there's the montage of him driving the motorcycle and there's the sunset. And we were really trying to get that motorcycle scene in there, but something happened where we couldn't do it and all of a sudden there's a there's that corvette scene in the middle of the video which comes out of nowhere and that just kind of fell into my lap two days before the shoot oh, and nice. somebody somebody a buddy of mine's good friend was a professional driver and he just wanted some video footage and wanted to know if we wanted to come down and do that and everything just fell into place that those two days beautifully <laughs> The whole year leading up to it was a different story. But That's, it was well, you'll, you'll, have, you'll have to tell us about the story. What I, what I do love is that when the 80s and that whole carefree time, yeah. knowing that this was for your friend, I think of uh, many of us had personal hard things. Sure. But it kind of made, it didn't make it fun, but you know what I mean? It was kind of a right. callback to given the time that we're in now of saying, Oh yeah, we went through hard things before. We just did them all as individuals. Sure. You know, for this. Sure. Yeah, I I think you told us a little bit um, through email about some of the things that had led up to the. Yeah. Sounds like well, had trials and tribulations to get to those perfect two days. <laughs> it was yeah. It was we had the song had been written for quite a while, and then we were kind of patching, putting things together, and then we had a you know we had a. We had a keyboard player who was kind of on and off, but playing a bigger role then, which is not in the song now. And that kind of took some time. But then I got the storyboard together and I got the location scouted. And it was this perfect one house down in um, closer, closer to Mankato, I think, or, or closer to Albert Lee is where it okay. was. There's a, this old rickety church and then a tiny house next to it and a small graveyard across the street. And a buddy of ours happened to live in the house next door. Wow. So it was perfect for this kind of like November rain style setting, which I envisioned. And so we got that. And then I got my buddy who's a professional drone uh, videographer. All that was right. And then a buddy of ours who had done pyrotechnics for Kiss and some of the bigger hair metal bands. No! He, he, we rented a rehearsal space from him and he got on and he was like, I, I'll do all this for you and I'll do it for real cheap. <laughs> so everything was falling into place. And then the recording studio sessions took longer. Then we, we had a time restriction due to we weather in Minnesota. So we had to do it before October. And then the about two weeks before the shoot, the pyrotechnic guy, I messaged him. I said, are we all ready to go? We have everything good. And he said, he didn't respond for a couple of days. And he got back to me and he said, Jordan, I'm sorry. I, I broke my back in a car accident. Oh. And I am in, I'm not going to be able to do anything. So you can't really get mad at that. No. <laughs> it's not like he was just like, I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And dropped off. Yeah. So I tried real hard to see if there's a few buddies of mine that he could teach how to do it quick. But also, you don't want to be like, I know you just broke your back, but could you break your back a little bit more for me? Just. And it just didn't work out. Then the, the location fell through. The guy had to move from there. My buddy who was shooting, um, my buddy... My buddy who was going to shoot the video, he had other things coming up. And then, you know, things got away from us. The winter came and then COVID hit. And it was just, I started thinking, okay, I, to backtrack, we had a very successful Kickstarter campaign for this whole project. And so I'm sitting on, I have these people's money that they've given oh. for this. So it's not like I can kind of give up on it. 
or shoot something that's very that just kind of sucks and go well here's your here's your money's worth yeah and then we kind of it started getting to into september the end of the summer and i thought i have to put this out i can't do it and all of a sudden a, a good friend of mine he was just like i know a buddy who runs a fireworks company in wisconsin i'm sure he will get us some things we need if you tell him give him a good idea i gave him a good idea he gave me exactly what we needed for very cheap and a friend of mine was like he, he ordered a bunch of detonators like little detonators from japan <laughs> and they're, show, they're showing up to my house in these military green boxes <laughs> <laughs> and oh and i'm um, yeah that's so it, everything came together and everyone just kind of was like yeah i'll show up and i'll help out but then our bass player couldn't make it that day and the keyboard player dropped off the morning of and all of a sudden i'm like everything's falling apart we don't um, some of the lights aren't working when we get down there. And then all of a sudden I just called some buddies. I was like, would you like to fill in? It's going to be awesome. You just have to play bass. And they're like, sure. Then I realized that person had never played on stage before. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the guy we got to play the keyboards looks surprisingly like the guy who was, who was our keyboard player. Oh. And so it, every, everything came together. It was the coldest day of the year up to that point. So it was freezing, but it, everything worked out beautifully. We, the explosives were great. Nobody flinched, uh, nobody got hurt. And it was, it took about, it was like a 14 hour day the first day, and then maybe like a six hour day, the second one. And it, the editing came together perfect. And I thought it was, I thought it turned out great. I really thought that we did a, my friend justice. Absolutely. It was, it was, it's really fun to watch. I mean, it just looks like fun. It, just, it was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it's, well, it's, it, we were, I think everyone was pretty nostalgic and a little sad, but I think we were all, I think we were all very excited and happy that we did something that there's just no doubt knowing him so well that he would have been like, I don't like this. <laughs> this is just, so. Did that help you power through the keyboard leaving keyboard guy the bass like you know that's a big drop off yeah it was we did get the original bass player in there in the second day of shooting he just okay. he couldn't he couldn't make it that day and okay. between the drummer and the guitarist and myself and every other part that was coming together for that one specific day i was just i called him i said zach i don't want you to feel bad but i'm just gonna have someone fill in we're gonna do we'll get you in the video. And he was fine with it. Then the keyboard player, it's, I mean, there's not even any keyboards on the song. So <laughs> it, did, it didn't really matter. Okay. <laughs> but no, it was still, it was, we actually on that day had two separate people fill in as keyboard players. And you don't, you don't really notice it. You don't, there's a lot of other stuff going on to notice. Plus I had them both wear the leopard print shirt. So if anyone did notice, most of the focus would be on that shirt but they both look surprisingly similar also. So they both have chest hair, a little beard, scruffy <laughs> hair, and it worked out great. Sure, I watched it a couple of times. I would, you could have said who, yeah. you know, what what role had two actors? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> good question, good trivia question, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be fun to watch the video with you because I bet you could freeze frame it and I bet there's a story behind every- oh so much and i've watched you know and when editing something you watch it over and over and over yeah. to the point where i'm you know i when i hear when i listen through the the ep that has that song on it that we haven't released yet i i get to that song i'm like ah, i really like what we did here but i am so sick <laughs> of listening to this song but it's the whole video is just watching because you know you were there during the whole i was there during the whole time and just every laugh that we had. So we also did a behind the video or a making of the video in the in the vein of like the old MTV yep. making the videos, which is uh, which you can also watch on YouTube there, which is which is pretty fun. I think I, I remember watching it a few weeks ago when I was cool. yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a point, there's a lot of times there where we turned around 
and this whole field was on fire. And I thought, we're getting arrested. <laughs> no way we're not getting arrested for arson. And we didn't. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very proud of that. Well done. I can't even imagine if someone were to say, here, you talk to the fireworks guy and let him know what you want. Yeah. It was kind of like piecing together pieces of music videos I'd seen in the past. And he was just like, oh, yeah, these are so-and-so fountains, and these are dragon breath blasts. I, I said, great. <laughs> and then he's, I'm like, I want them to be just like this. He goes, how about, he goes, I've never shot a music video. I just run this company, or I help run this company. How about, uh, I'll just put together what I think these look like and what I think you'll need. And I, I was pretty burnt out on, like, deciding what to do. I'm like, yeah, do that. When I got, to, I drove to Wisconsin to get him. He's got a whole pickup truck loaded up. I have a small little, <laughs> small little car. And I thought, how are we going to do this? He goes, don't worry, man. I do this for a living. Jam packed my car to the brim. And as I'm driving back to Minnesota, I thought, how do I explain all these? My car, entire car is jam packed full of fireworks. But, and we didn't use them. Say, yeah. You're yeah. already being watched by the detonators in your makeup, <laughs> yeah. your car. Like you're on well, the, the list. The other thing too is I'm thinking, so I, I was, yeah, I just every thought hitting a bump <laughs> or something, something going off, but it was fine. And uh, they, they served their purpose. There, yeah. yeah. Like a a la carte at the fireworks. Absolutely. Filling out the thing. <laughs> knock, a, knock a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And at yeah. one point, there were there's scenes in there. Like you said, there's a story for almost every scene. There's one towards the end, this beautiful spray of fireworks that was never supposed to happen. So the guitarist was, I always tell him, I'm like, don't, you don't need to help. You, I was like, go back on the bus. You don't need to help. We can stay warm on the bus and let these people do this. And he's just trying to help. And he put the fireworks, these giant fireworks in upside down. And so they blew the cannons apart. <laughs> Who knows what could have happened there? But it turned out being incredibly beautiful. But we didn't find out till later on. We're like, "Who? how did that happen? And everyone said, Riggs did it. He put them in upside down when we told him not to help. <laughs> so, there's just a lot of things. You all are lucky you didn't put an eye out. I mean, that's. Oh, yeah, I did. I had to go to the doctor for some hearing loss afterwards, after the oh. video shoot, which uh, the, that they, and they did a, an MRI or a CAT scan and everything to first, they're like, we're not sure what's wrong. And it could be a tumor. So I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and then, the, you know, it came back and they're like, you might have just got a good little blast and your hearing will return my hearing's back and fine so so that's the worst that happened from that that's not too bad insurance yeah. conflict, so i feel good i was gonna say that would be scary to have hearing loss being a musician too and that lasts a sure. while doesn't it i still i mean i've been doing this for so many years that my my hearing i feel like that ringing is just kind of there but now i'm like I'm getting to the age where everything is starting. Everything I've done is starting. I'm starting to feel it in different places and I'm starting to notice the ringing in the background a little more. So I'm starting to think an awful lot about earplugs. <laughs> Never the world gets back to when venues are open, assuming I I'm hoping that that happens sooner than later, obviously. Hopefully, yes. hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is funny when you get to that age. I, I, I like to stand right by the speaker. Sure. I don't play music, but I like to be right by the speaker. Sure. And I've had many people get me fancy earplugs. It, but it yeah. Just, if I were smart. Yeah, there's something. Ten years about, from now, I'm going to say, "What the well." Yeah, there's something about singing with the, the ear, them opening them up, and then some air getting in there, where I just can't do it. But I mean, I. I guess I just don't care anymore about the air. I'd rather have my hearing. But we'll see. I mean, I've been playing acoustic in my basement, so I don't really need them down here. True. True. 
true. So this is this is one song off an album that you guys are gonna. Yeah. So the album it's a three song EP, which is also called so Rail Rail Vodka is the title track. So it's called Rail Vodka. There are two other songs on there that we have yet to release. There's clips of them. You can kind of hear some of that in the making of Real Vodka in that video. Mm -hmm. Kind of laced some of them in there as teasers. Uh, the goal now is to kind of shop it to see if we can find just even a small independent label that might help us put it out. Otherwise, we are considering doing, just putting it out on our own, pressing the vinyls on our own and possibly doing a June release there's uh there have been there have been some cool we don't want to do a live stream but we also don't want to be the people going well let's do this thing where we just get people into a room i don't want to be the person going oh yeah jordan was jordan and those guys just jammed a bunch of people into the room right and, uh, i don't i don't want to be unsafe about it so th there are a couple of cool theaters that are doing um, performances where they're doing professional lighting and sound and videography. And so we might, we might look into that and see how that is and then do some sort of donation thing through that. Nice. I, uh, I've, I have tried a few, a few uh, live streams and unless you really know what you're doing and have patience, which I don't, um, it, it just don't really sound that great. And it's not like being there. So but we'll see. We have absolutely no plans yet, but it's very hard to have a finished, a complete mixed and mastered record under your belt and not release it. Yeah, so, that's gotta be. So that's tough. And you know, there's close friends to me. I'm just, I'm constantly, or constantly nick. And then you sit on it long enough, you start nitpicking things going, oh, I should have changed that. Should have changed this. But we'll see. It's, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of up in the air right now. No, that's got to be hard. That's a, but it'll Let's, be great when, yeah, leave it. Yeah, I'm, I, we're very excited. We all think it's the best stuff that we've ever done. It's, um, I think everyone says that when they do a new album, but <laughs> it is by far the best, the most, um, spent the most time on, on these, on this tiny batch of songs, just to make sure, especially with the real vodka, that everything was just how, I originally envisioned it. I wanted to have that feel of like listening to at least that song in particular. The other two are not in the same vein as that, but I really wanted it to, that song in particular to have that kind of every rose has its thorn vibe to it. Yes. So it a long time kind of re rehashing that over and over again. It took me back to when, Good. Good. you know, Good. <laughs> to back happen. to when MTV played music. Sure. Sure. I love that. That makes me happy. Yeah. Oh, as soon as I saw it, I, you know, well, it's <laughs> back in that day, I, I, I probably would have listened more to, to a band like Forever Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Research. Yeah, there you go. There you go. But Research. I, you know, I was much more of a punk, any, you know, more yeah. of a, Sure. Than Kennedy's than a, <laughs> sure. but of course it's, if you wanted to, you know, there were only, get the violins out there were only four stations on the television there were only yeah. <laughs> you know if you wanted to hear music but it but i you know remember it fondly and it, you certainly liked it but it, sure. yeah it sure that's awesome that's a nice nice name drop forever dumb there you go yeah, i did the... listen to some of it because i thought oh yeah <laughs> that was that was so you got you've been playing music for quite some time uh, my almost my whole life i am I'm 35 years old and I have been playing since I was 15. Nice. So, and that, uh, forever dumb, <laughs> forever dumb was just the epitome of slacker punk rock. And that was, that was what we were all about then. In fact, this EP has one of the songs is a, a forever dumb guest. I don't know if it's a cover, if I'm, you know, if I wrote that song as well. But we uh, we did we redid a forever dumb song which used to be two minutes long and is now four and a half minutes long. <laughs> it's amazing what you can do when you slow slow down a song. Slow it down. <laughs> or figure out what, how to how to use a metronome. I was gonna say I wondered if today was significant for you since you have a Zach Morris song and one of the members 
passed away. Yeah, so. just so much. You guys are good. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I was, my girlfriend and I, we, um, we took a nap yesterday, which is so, so rare that we ever take a nap together in the middle of the day, which was, but it was awesome. And I woke up and I had three text messages from friends about that, about um, Dustin Diamond passing away. And I mean, you never want anyone to, like nobody should have to go through that. And I think it was stage four cancer. Yeah. But there's also, it's hard to not remember hearing what an asshole he was for all the time. And uh, but that, I mean, that makes me sound like an asshole. Um, I think it's, I think it's very sad. I think it's very sad what happened. And it really did make me think for a little bit about all the time when I was younger watching Saved by the Bell. And it's just crazy. 44 years old is very young to die. Yeah. Yeah. But you know that, um, I don't think I got a screech line in that song. No, you don't. No. But I'm, gonna, I'm just now noticing that. <laughs> wow. I've got a Tory line in there. No. Yeah. Huh. We are going to, I'm going to start recording, um, redoing that song now. So maybe I need to pop in a screech line. Jeepers. Yeah. I never even noticed that until now. Good Lord. I worked forever <laughs> on that. I worked forever on that one. Oh boy. You have to update it. Update yeah. it. I guess so. I'll do two days. We'll do an extended version. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a, yeah, it's very sad, but it's, um, it's strange strange when people i don't know strange when people you watched for every day after school for an hour would get home pop in a vhs and record an hour of <laughs> the bell on tbs and that um yeah that's uh it's very weird i'm just about caught up to who we're talking about <laughs> Oh, it, was, it was no it was it was just past my time it was just oh, sure. I, I do know who it is i have i have never actually seen the show but i i try right. like uh, the guy the guy who played zach morris claims he has never seen the show either so oh well there you go i don't think you should feel too bad no no I'm not seriously <laughs> he says yeah. he's never watched it he has a podcast right now where he claims he has never watched it so they're watching re-watching every episode and then he gives some comments. I I made it about five episodes of the podcast in, and I thought I can't do it. <laughs> There's just too much. There's too much content out there now for me, and I've seen every episode of that millions of times. <laughs> I don't need to rewatch it again. Well, at least the pandemic hasn't gone that long. <laughs> no, no. Uh, if it did, I would. I don't know. Yeah. This, we've uh, we've touched on rewatching Lost again, and that uh, I just can't bring myself to to put that kind of time into a show that I've already seen when there's so much other stuff out there. I have a daughter who could rewatch and rewatch and rewatch. She's 16. She's seen The Office like four times through. <laughs> See that? I think that I think when a show. I guess, I don't know. I guess it's the same thing. Saved by the Bell is three, 30 minutes. The Office is 30 minutes. But I feel like I just, I had seen, I could watch it if it's on TV. I can't then go listen to a podcast, an hour long podcast about a half hour show. No, you're right. Watching. Absolutely. Unless it's, unless they're on, unless they're really letting me in behind the scenes. I know I'm trying to think about, is there a show that I would, that I would say, oh, I wish they would do that for this show. No. Oh, I would. I love Lost. I Lost was my favorite show. I watched. I've watched 120 hours of it five <laughs> times over. Nice. And but I, and if they did a podcast like that, I would probably go and listen to it. But I think that's the only show out there. Maybe Better Call Saul. I don't know. All right. All right. Well, I will have to. I don't think I've seen either of those. <laughs> no. Oh boy, you're in for a treat. I know, I know. Well, you know, I got some time. Maybe I'll add those to my list. Add Seems like there's list. still quite a bit of time left. Yeah, yeah. 
you have we put out some i mean the, the music that we've been talking about is the stuff that you do with jordan carr and the boys it's more yep. rock and more yep but you have done recently some other before and more you have some yep. more recent music that you're putting out now yeah so for the my first album was reinventing the dumbass which was a solo album which was kind of a lot of those forever dumb songs that kind of it was uh, kind of seemed like the other guys in the band didn't really want to do it. So I I um, kind of slowed them down and put that out. And I spent an awful okay. lot of time doing that. And in the midst of doing that, I was on trial for, for a bar fight that had happened when I was younger and with the potential of going to prison for 30 years. Ooh. And so it was a very, that was a very dark kind of rock and roll time in my life recording that record. I did a whole live record uh, kind of rehashing it called Revisiting the Dumbass, which is also, that's on Spotify and, and Bandcamp as well. That, yeah, well, I've listened to parts of it. So yes, please go out because I have, like, it's coming together for me now, sure. some of the music. Yeah. yeah so that, um, that was my first album was reinventing the dumbass and that was going on while I was uh, we were writing or mostly recording it it would pretty much been written for a while while I was on trial for the whole year that I was on trial <gasps> two days we finished it two days before I went and was sentenced to a year so I then went and sat in lockup for a year and then I uh, when I got out I went right to mixing and doing some mixing, editing, and then mastering that record. And then it was, uh, that's uh, kind of how Jordan Carr and the Boys got formed was, it was all a solo record. But then we, I wanted to put a band together for the release and have it at my favorite bar. And uh, that bar is no longer, no longer here, but that was such, we all had such a good night and the bar had ran out of whiskey that night so everyone who was there had drank the bar out of every type of whiskey they had which was no small feat and uh, so after that everyone was like i we should just keep doing this we'll just give it a band name and i was like well we'll just call it the boys because i'm pretty sure you guys are gonna quit sooner or later and i'll have to replace people and <laughs> it's not tough yeah but then so then we did uh, jordan car and the boys empty bottles full hearts was the next record after that a couple years later but then we, uh, then what did we do after that? Then I did that, the live record, Revisiting the Dumbass. And then the quarantine hit. And I, then when I put out my next solo, uh, three song EP, which is called Neapolitan Man. And that is the latest thing I have put out okay. aside from the Real Vodka video. So I, it, it's interesting to hear about the, the early stuff and then the prison sure. time because I did I it, I don't know what songs it's like a song like Snow Day when yeah. in your when would the, when did you write that that was going to be a forever dumb song and that okay. was um I had written I had just I could never get the melody out of my head and that was uh that was about the one, one of two songs on the record that didn't have to do with extensive substance abuse and <laughs> And, and or this tumultuous relationship I was in at the time. I just was, um, you know, that, uh, that was written in 2000, 2010, I think. And I think I put the record out in 2013. Okay. There um, uh, just seems like there's a, in the song, kind of a, a loss of control, but a taking of responsibility. So sure. I was thinking, well, that fits well with sitting in trial for a year. Yeah, there was, I mean, there, there were parts of that that were re, reworded in, while I was recording. A lot of that record got rework, reworded to kind of fit what was going on in my life at that time, which was going to court every few weeks on trial, potentially thinking I'm going to sit in prison for 30 years. So, yeah, a lot of that got reworked, and I really, I, I let myself go off the rails. I put all my stuff in a storage unit was living in a spare bedroom at a friend's house and I was spending every night in the same bar 
now just because I thought this is the this is this is all I don't know what else to do. Yeah. And then when I did get out, that's where we had the album release for reinvent the dumbass. <laughs> was that that far? But well, was, but all of a sudden I'm saying that might be a really apt name then, revisiting the dumbass if you were right yeah. back to the bar I, where you were going off the rails. Yeah. That was, no, no judgment no. there, but no, I, mean, I don't I mean, have my bars where they might. <laughs> that's, it was, I that's, mean, it, that time in my life, it lended itself to that record so much that I'm more proud of that record than I am of anything else that I put out. Huh. And that is probably, I don't think it's the best, but I'm the most proud of it because that was, it was everything I had going on in my head that I had just put out with one other friend of mine who was recording it. And that was, uh, it just, it feels when I listen to it, it feels like the hangover that was my life <laughs> for that whole year. And, uh, but I think it's smooth enough to put on where if you do, if you are listening to it hungover, you're not going, oh, turn this shit off. <laughs> so, but I, I'm so proud of that one. And that's just, I think that will probably be always be my favorite one that I put out. Just because what, what was happening and what yeah. I was going through. And um, the soundtrack yeah. to a very strange time in your life. It was indeed. And it was a very, it was a very different coming of age time than I would have hoped for. But, but it's it really it's super interesting to hear that that song Ronnie it's you know that let's do it all before we're old I mean it there's a celebration of partying sure. and sure. then there's some real moments of kind of blunt yeah. sparks of reality of you know that that was I think that's the only song that I have that's pretty well known and at least anywhere that I've played that if anyone's that's listening to anything, that is the one that people ask for. So that's the one that is, I will always play. We just finished a full band version. We just finished recording Ooh. it two weeks ago. Okay. So there's so much stuff in the pipeline. It's just so weird now to know how to put it out. But yeah, that Ronnie song is probably, it's, I love that song still very much. And it's just, it's, when a song is fun to play live and not just fun to listen to or good on record, it's gold. Some of those songs are cool on record, but they're not that fun to play live. But that one just hits all the marks. It's fun to play. It's it's easy to sing along with. And it just, it naturally flows. And it's, I mean, there was, I've always been a huge fan of kind of pop, pop rock or pop chords with really kind of dark and downer. I like, I like the melodies to go up, be upbeat, but the lyrical content to be very kind of dark yeah. and that song kind of hits all that it does uh, yeah it's it's that you know listening to things that that was those are the two that really struck me from that sure. those um, are the those are the first two songs we recorded for the record it was ronnie and snow day nice so that brings us up to talk about the the new stuff that you're doing to the the neapolitan man yes so the neapolitan man I was, for years before now, I was a bartender and I was, for, for that Real Vodka video, I had cut my hair into a mullet and bleached it blonde, which we really thought we were going to hit that 80s vibe. But then we never shot it, so my hair is just growing out from this mullet. <laughs> and so to this brown, brown, black, blonde, and then I have a very bright red facial hair. And uh, while I was bartending, there was uh, another coworker and then uh, another buddy of mine who would come into the bar often. And we were kind of just joking around, calling me a Neapolitan man. And then we were talking about it. I'm like, man, maybe I should just put out some record like that where it's just, it's three songs, like Neapolitan ice cream is three flavors. Yeah. My hair color is three. And it was just <laughs> kind of a silly joke. And then like two weeks later, the world shut down. And I had, after about a month, I think, of sitting around going, when this, when it, when we realized this was going to be much longer, I kind of took some demos that I had and I reached out to three different producers and I had, I asked each person if they wanted to take, do their own take on my song with just very little guidance from me. And everyone, all three of them were like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I got nothing else to do. 
So I recorded things very poorly in my basement and then the guitars, piano and vocals, and I would send it over to them. And then, you know, they'd send them back and be like, you don't know what you're doing. You need to send them like this and that. And that. <laughs> so finally I figured it out. And then um, I spent, I think the whole summer pretty much kind of just throwing those songs back and forth. And I thought they turned out great. Then it's the way it's just, it was very different because usually I'm the driving force and all the decisions that are made before, before we go into, you know, before the final product is put out. And this one, I kind of just let them sit back. It was a good exercise in, in restraint, I guess, and uh, trusting other people. Well, granted, these guys had all been friends of mine for many years, but they're, they all have very different musical backgrounds and they just had a little bit of guidance from me on each song. I thought it turned out awesome. It was, and it was exciting. It's just, again, it was just so hard to know what to do because I usually look forward to a, trying to put together as big of a blowout as I can and then set an after party for everything. And this year I just kind of, I just, uh, I played a couple, uh, did a couple online live streams and then that, that was it. So it's just kind of, it's just kind of like a, I don't know, a stepping stone to the next stuff that we're doing. Cause like I said, that was not, none of that was done very professionally but it was all, um, it was mixed and mastered as professionally as could be. But yeah, it's, uh, I'm really proud of that. It's just, it's a, it's such a strange time. Anything that's happened in the last year, it's, it's strange to not feel like I've lived the same day over and over and over, even, even though that record came out and I got some really, really nice reviews for it and put out a nice looking music video. I think it's just, there's so much content going out now. I think it's easy to, to, to overlook that because there was no, no giant show, um, you know, to look forward to or to stand out in people's minds. Or maybe everyone just hated it. I don't know. That could be it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you're right. And it's, you know, funny you that we'd be talking it? on ground. Gr no, 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 no. <laughs> about Groundhog Day that we're talking, you know, here we are talking on Groundhog Day, but oh, even, sure. even when, it's just really hard to remember what the hell we did last week. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, it's, I did some good things. I did, some, I'm sure I was busy. I don't, yeah. you know, I, I'm behind on everything. I must've done something and not done other. I mean, I, you know, I think that there's a whole, just in the audience, just in everybody, it's hard right. to, but I, but as I said, I was talking about your video with my friend, you know, so know that sure. people I'm are perfect. talking about it, you know, I appreciate it. But it's also, I, you know, I, it's, she's my walking buddy. People aren't talking to people in the same way that they're, right. you know, because suddenly we're on Zooms with, <laughs> with cousins that we may or may not have spoken to for the last, not on, you know, you're, you're talking right. to your grandma more than you're talking to, you know, and my, you know, my mom is only so interested in music videos. Sure. You know? I did. We did. I am um, on my birthday. My birthday was April 27th. And I set up my basement into a venue the best I could with fog machine and lights and everything. Nice. And it was, I had a great turnout. There was uh, so many people, but grant, this was in April, you know, a little over a month after we were home. So everyone was home. The bars weren't open. Nothing was open. So there was, and that was awesome. A lot of, a lot of people were there for that. But as soon as I get done playing a song, dead silence in my house. <laughs> so, and then, but then we had, they set up a zoom party afterwards and there's like 15, 20 people squares on here. And that was a moment, like it was my zoom party, I guess, but I kept getting up and leaving to go outside and Cause I couldn't take it. I could not stand that many people, you know, at a party, if you don't want to talk to someone, you just walk away or you can, you know, you can, multiple people can talk at once. Hold on. It's you know, yeah. that easy. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And it just, I thought, God, I can't wait to go back to a real after party. Cause this is once you get one person in there that really likes to talk a lot, then everyone else is just kind of, waiting for their turn to talk and it just it's just a bizarre world that we're living in right now and that's it and it's extra bizarre as a musician that wants to be out playing which i mean there's millions of us so 
Yeah. And there are, you know, even more people who are dying to see music. Sure. I mean, it's, it's hard to figure out a way to get, I mean, there's no comparison. I mean, there's, there's nothing equal to going to a live show and we can't figure out how to do that. And it's, you know, people are trying to figure out ways to connect with people who want to hear music and it's just tough. It's very, yeah. it's very hard to do. It's very hard to do like this. Yeah. So. It but, is, and it's kind of, it's like methadone, we'll take it. You know what I mean? But it's not a replace, it's, it's a different, it's a different right. thing. I think right. that the music videos, I think that that it's, again, it's different. It's right. That's the best we could do, I think, is music yeah. videos and that's, and it's tough to do also, like I said, I, there's so many things we have that I have finished ready to go, but I don't like I, in my mind, I'm like, oh, if I put it out now, maybe in three months, the whole world will be cured. And then it won't be as impactful, which I mean, I'm, it's not happening, but it's just, it's such a bizarre time. So, I mean, I appreciate, I appreciate you two for doing this. Cause this is awesome. This makes me feel in a sense, like I'm still, like I'm not just that I'm not just sitting in my basement writing and recording music, right. but that there's something to look forward to as a musician. Oh, that's good. I good. appreciate, Thank you. That's, I appreciate that's, you doing that's this good with me. Cause we do appreciate the music. We do appreciate the, as I said, especially the videos, I think. Yeah. Um, hey, and I, the other weird thing is you do listen to music differently now. Like I'm sure. much more apt to listen to a whole, a whole album or a whole, you know, I listen to it while I'm walking. I'll listen sure. to it. You kind of stop and you listen to it in a way that right. I'm not just listening to the music while I'm in the car going here, going there, going here, right. because I'm not going anywhere. Right. Cause you got time now you have time to sit and listen and pick things apart. Yeah. And, it, but it's, uh, as a as a fan as a as an audience as a music you know lover it's great it's great and i enjoy the music but it's that's not that satisfying for you it's you know it's hard to give the sure. like i'm walking at mississippi right. i really enjoy the song you don't it's yeah there, there, you know it'd be nice if there would be a way to do that like it's just there's how oh, it's it's just it's there's so there is a lot of content that's coming out now. There musicians are putting out more music now than ever because there's the time to do it. But I also think that means a lot of things are being overlooked. And especially if people don't know how to properly promote things or to get them out there. And I feel like that was with Neapolitan Man. I just kind of fell in that rut where I was like, I don't really know what to do to go above and beyond what uh, what everyone else is doing. Especially, like I said, if I can't attach a show to it or, you know, an in-person feeling right. that, that of gathering with other people for this. So I kind of just let that slide by and I was all right with that. But, but there, now that I have these other things that are so, that we put so much time, money, effort into other people's money into. Right. I really want to make sure that we get this right. And, um, and if we have to sit on some new material for a little while longer. I can live with that. Well, and there's definitely a light at the end of the tunnel. It seems to be. I mean, it's it's hard to imagine that it's, after the last year. But yeah. there, I mean, there's been some good things. Some good things have <laughs> happened in the last month. It's month. way too damn slow. But but if yeah. you had told me in August that there would be a vaccine by right. by the first of the year, I would have yeah. said, well, that'd be great. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, we, we have uh, my girlfriend's mother just got her first round of it. I see a lot of people have gotten their first round, second round. So that's, I'm, I'm happy. A buddy of mine, actually the buddy who played, uh, filled in for bass in that Real Vodka music video works for Mayo Clinic. And he is, he was telling me about getting that and that uh, it's not as far off as, as everyone thinks it is. No, no. But it's good. But it's just... But in the same breath, it is, it, it, it's just Groundhog Day every day, you know. You're not, you're not lying. <laughs> no, no, it's absolutely, but I think it will. I, well, and there's things to look forward to when, so absolutely. I think just, you know, I think what you're doing is great. Give, you know, giving people a little taste of this. As I said, that video was really, I just, it was, you know, 
that call back to when, you know, on the one hand, the biggest worry was, you know, how, how big could I make my hair? Sure. sure. What, you know, could I, could I get out of the house? with right. one skirt and wear another when I got there, you know, like who's sure. who going to pick up the beer kind of a thing worries. Right. But in the same breath, it was, you know, we had real worries too, but it was just that time of, you know. And I hope that, I mean, it's just, it had a real, the video and the song had a real purpose and they were directed towards a person. But I mean that, I think if, I think if any, everybody's lost somebody at some point and if, if if you don't like the music or the explosions and the Corvettes and the bus, maybe something's wrong with you, but I'm, <laughs> I'm joking. But I mean, you can, I think you can look past that and everyone can relate to missing someone or yeah. losing someone. Well, that. And, and that is, uh, I mean, there's, I hope, at least I hope that people get that from that, that it, it will make them think about a friend that they've lost or I, think about. It's ex- my and well what's so funny is my friend that i miss from that era sure. well she'd have been much more into madonna to be fair but she could <laughs> have her hair so but but i absolutely thought of her while i watched it that's great that's and, awesome you know because i'm thinking what the hell would somebody make a video to honor me makes me think oh, <laughs> shit. dogs and running great. dogs and running heather i know <laughs> there you go yeah but um okay Jordan, play her the surprise video we did now. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Hold on. Let me figure this out. Exactly. <laughs> Let's see what you come up with there. <laughs> it is an amazing tribute. It's an amazing tribute. You know? It's, Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to drink cheap beer. Well, I, I, I feel like you might go for cheap, whisk, cheap whiskey a little more than the cheap beer. I, but. You know... I kind of anything that rolls around in the glass is all right with me. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> well, I'll take that. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Soon, soon we'll all be together. So that's good. And that, and until then, will you release the next two songs, some more songs from the? You know, I think that we're kind of, we're going to talk about that if we want to just do it as put the three songs out on Spotify and then kind of make a plan for some sort of release, maybe of the vinyl release or something like that. But we've also talked about just doing a music video for each of the songs. That's my next question. And then just kind of put them out that way. We still have some fireworks left over. I was just going to say, you've set the bar pretty damn high. <laughs> yeah, I know. See, that's the thing is I don't know. I don't know what else we're supposed to do after that. So I was that- going to say, maybe you should ask if people will pay to be spectators and get a little crowd there. I wanted to do an outdoor thing where we sold very limited tickets and then played yes. real vodka last and used all the last of the fireworks in the middle of the song. Ooh. So, but I don't know. We will see. There are now that I know that they're where to get the detonators and <laughs> uh, and who will make the explosives for us. We can kind of do this whenever. That's, I mean, it's going to be pretty tough to top that one, I think, as far as visuals go. Maybe I'll try. I'll, maybe I'll try my hand at screenplay writing next, and there you go. do a very <laughs> try my hand at acting. Nice. I don't know if that will be as enjoyable as you know Corvettes flying around guitar players and explosives, but <laughs> maybe you, maybe it's you got to do some action acting is what you got to. <laughs> I might I might have to do that. We had we had just talked about doing some things with the extra explosives the other day. So something something will get done with them, and that it will we'll use it for a video. That's for sure. All right. Well, you know how to get a hold of us. We'll be expecting our invitations. Yeah. Perfect. I will. We'll, we'll, we'll hold the. We'll, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, that's exactly that's smarter. If you guys bring a fire extinguisher, please. Yeah, that's our job. That's our job. I'm good at remembering that kind of stuff. Funny, funny. Well, Jordan, for people who I'll put this in the notes, but for people who are listening, how can people find you online? Um, I do most things through the Instagram, which is at Jordan Carr with four R's, C A R R R R. And then my website is the neverendinghangover.com. And that's got everything on there music videos, all my music, uh, merchandise. 
um, tour dates when we can do that again. But basically, every, everything that I do, I'll do through the Instagram and that website. And that um, that's about it. Nice, nice. Well, we look forward to being able to see you play live with fireworks or not. We'll, we'll take either way. So that's because it really, I enjoyed the music, but that video, it did make me think of my friend. It did make remember, you know. That's awesome. Well, I hope everyone who listens to this will go give it a watch. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So awesome. Thank you all Thank so you. much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, this is so fun. You guys have a beautiful evening. I'm going to uh, get more popcorn. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> have a good night. You too. Bye-bye.